Hi, everyone. Welcome to Survivor Now podcast. Today, Nina and I are talking to Kirby, the 20th castaway to be eliminated from Australian Survivor, Titans vs. Rebels, and the seventh member of the jury. Kirby, how are you doing today? I'm good. Um, obviously, Ferris broke out with me last night, but I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> We hated to see it. Oh, my God. Anything he's given you, throw it in the trash, burn it. Oh, I'm going through the whole breakup thing. Don't you worry. He's Yeah, he chose JLP over me. And I was going to say, we're here to support. We're here to help you through this. But how was your um, – did you watch the episodes? You were all caught up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I watched it, and it was, um, it was nice to see him show that sort of love and emotion – that he did like I, even I was confused if we we're on Love Island for a hot minute so yeah it was yeah it was lovely to watch um and hard at the same time I think my family's all in mourning at the moment <laughs> no I we get it and I let me just say the relationship between you and Ferris was probably one of my favorite storylines that I've ever seen on Australian Survivor you said it but I also agreed I made a post saying that it was like watching a romantic comedy <laughs> between the two of you it was so amazing but it got kind of turbulent and kind of started off because you voted with the cuddle crew and, but you knew that, uh, there, that uh, PETA would be the one to go home anyway. So yeah. were you hoping that this move would go unnoticed by Ferris and Garrick? Well, for the context, like I've never watched Survivor before. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I'll just sit on the fence. I, they think I'm in their alliance. I've not had one strat chat with them. So like what harm can it do? Turns out a whole lot. Um, so when I get back, Garrick's blowing up. Ferris is like, sort of, what was that? And I'm like, I just, I just did it, and I'm sorry. So you've got my vote. So that's why I was like, yeah, Eileen, this is your plan. I'm writing Alex's name down. Say no more. I'm in. So that's sort of how that worked out. But obviously, in a game like Survivor, once you sort of break that, you're done. Like people don't really trust you the same. So it was an absolute rookie mistake, but I was learning lessons on the way. You learn very quickly. So yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it as a, as a, um, like a social experiment, like as a small scale of what society is. So people don't like being lied to at the same time they want to be in control, but then they don't want to panic. Like it's just a roller coaster. It was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what was your journey like getting to the show if you weren't a fan of the series beforehand? Because you, you wouldn't be able to tell from watching you. Yeah, no. So I worked with Luke Toki. I was a shot fire when he was drilling on the mine. So I tried to watch like an episode. Didn't get it. I have to do something for it to sort of land to make any any sense. And I applied. I saw, saw it on LinkedIn, which is like a profile for business, like a Facebook for business people. Yeah, yeah. I applied through that and I just wanted to see where I was at in my life, challenge myself, step outside of my comfort zone and go with it. As long as I wasn't voted off first, I'm, I was fine with how I was going to play. So <laughs> that, was, that was that. That's always the number one goal. Day one, do not be the first person. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so tick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I do have one question. We might jump around a little bit between, you know, episodes and things. But I do want to know, when Raymond told you about his advantage where he, as long as everybody voted for him, he can make that choice. What was it that made you kind of keep that secret, especially considering in this last episode, you were always kind of like, you knew you could trust Ferris, but Raymond was a wild card. Yeah. So for context with that, I... After the Eileen vote, Val came to me and said, we voted with you, we want Ferris out. And I was like, that's not going to work for my game. <laughs> I didn't say that to her, but she saw it in my eyes and I was like, oh, my God. Like I walked up to Ferris and I was like, they want you. They've got pretty good numbers. I said, but we need to make sure that we can get Val before anything else. And I said, you know, Caroline was still rocky with Val. Like, you know, there's so many different layers to it. So that's where that plan for Val came into play. Raymond obviously did what he did and we saw it. And I wish I'd got up and said to Re, like, you need to write down Alex's name and just pretend like it's still Val, whatever. I didn't. That didn't work. Jada went home. Next night, Ray was sort of making it up to me. So I was like, 
brother, if you don't write down Val's name, I said, I'm writing down reason you're going home. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> so that's sort of what happened. But him telling me he needed to because him and Ferris couldn't pull it off because if I felt like they were being dodgy, I would have told everyone. I said, something's yeah. going on over here. On top of then, because I knew about it, I told Kitty, Caroline and Ree because if it came out that I knew and they didn't know, we were automatically in the minority. Mm. So with you saying that, did you tell Kitty and Caroline like a lot of the second you found out, did you kind of wait a little bit? What was that time frame? I sat on it. Um, I sat on it, but I was also, I also wanted to make sure that I was proactive in just informing them because if Caroline, because Caroline's quite emotional with, she, if she thought it was her name, then you don't know what's going to happen. So as long as they were settled and they knew it wasn't them, then they were okay. They okay. sort of kept tight-lipped with it. That's good. Yeah, that tribal council was so interesting to watch. I mean, I was really surprised that you, or the individual immunity that you earned, you passed on to Rihanna. So were you feeling secure that Raymond wouldn't use his ultimate vote against you? I think... Raymond trying to get rid of me at that time, which would have been a, an ideal play, like it would have been the bi biggest move for him, it wouldn't have been favourable. Like Ferris would have been next and then Raymond's game would have almost been over or he could have been taken because he wasn't a threat to anyone. Um, but, yeah, I just knew realistically that Raymond still knew he needed to have me around, but he wanted re, and mm. re knew that. And we both did not trust Raymond at all, but I needed to settle Ree. So the way that, you know, giving her the necklace, and that's what I said to her on the beach, I was like, you just have the necklace. You don't need to worry about it. Just go with the flow and write Raymond's name and then we're all good. <laughs> that was very kind of you to give her that necklace, sorry. And, but because we're talking about necklaces, I did have a question. When you won your necklace um, in the last episode, we kind of see you have a moment to yourself. Can you elaborate maybe a little bit, as much as you're comfortable with, what you were thinking in that moment? Yeah, I, I didn't realize that they caught that because <laughs> I, I tried really hard to – actually, I didn't have to try very hard not to show emotion. Like, I loved playing, and you saw that. I smiled in – Everything I was doing, even if it was wrong, I was smiling. So for me in that moment, I knew that me and Re were up regardless. And when I won it, it sort of sunk in that, like, I'm I'm okay, but my ride and die's not. And not only have I thrown her name to the wolf of Ferris, I now am like, how the hell do I keep her in here? So it was, I was just so tired, hungry fighting for my life in this game and my ride and die is about to get shot. So that was that. Thank you. Yeah, I love that moment because I everything you just described, I kind of felt as a viewer. I'm glad they caught it on camera because it just, it felt so real and it kind of felt like we were there with you in the game. I mean, talking about Re and Scott, it looked like from the viewer's perspective, from what we've heard when talking to Re and Scott outside of the game, it seemed like you all were very close. So how did your games, uh, how did you keep up your momentum after they were taken out of the game? Yeah, once Re, well, Scotty, Scotty and I, our whole entire journey, Rebels and Titans were together. So he was my left hand. He he was smart, he, he was observant, he was very privy to information because him and Eileen were close and I knew that. I was aware of that and that, you know, at a later date well, I would have to do something about that too if they would have probably got to me first. But Scotty's pretty smart. So I relied heavily on our conversations and, and it was always an us conversation or it was always transparent. So it was not like I went up to Scotty and said, this is what's happening we would put names on the table and say, well, what does that look like for your game and how does it affect you? And there's always a flow on effect. So if we got rid of, say, Kelly, for example, before Garrick, then that might not be, you know, that might not have worked for us. So what does that look like? Um, and that's how we work. And Ree, on the other hand, was trying to save her life because she is over there by herself and hence how chaotic she was and paranoid and untrusting to everyone because when I got to merge... She looked like she was a bit of a headless chook. But at the same time, she was choosing to trust Caroline and Kitty. And I was okay with that because we were really honest. 
and I said, you do what you need to because in my mind they need to be, people need to be in control of their own game. And if they don't feel that, mm -hmm. you become the threat. And, you know, it's very funny to piggyback off of you because my next question is about the fact that they show you multiple times in the game saying either you do have control or you have lost it and you want to gain it back. Yep. I'm very curious, you know, seeing on seeing you on the screen and possibly knowing you in person, two different things. What is it either do you think characteristically that you just have or based on your own experience that you actually seem to be like, I can do it. Like, and you just do it. You really just do it. What is it about you that you can just, I don't know, you just get it done. I think, I think the way that I played the game and my understanding of Survivor is it's everyone sort of, this is the way that you play it. You sort of sit in alliances. Is that right? That's the traditional way. I operate well in chaos and I knew that a lot of people have not experienced the things that I may have. And being in high pressure, you know, sports, sporting teams and having to win premierships and everything else, they all come to play. So when it came to creating something chaotic and then people managing, allowing that to happen, do your big move and sit back, they're still trying to settle from those two moves. So I was able just to watch and plant seeds and it, I think it comes down to the social game. I think it comes down to connecting with people and making them feel like they're in control and that you're trusted but you know each other yep. and, and it was genuine connection too it wasn't yep. wasn't lying about any any of what I said out there and vice versa but it was on a deeper level than you normally would see it and I can say just as a comment quite a few players said that you were one of the most genuine people out there and even Scott himself said that he admired how you played in chaos and actually used that to your advantage he I think like word for word he said she would get people to admit things somehow some way but they would just admit it and then she'd be like yep got it and I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> that would be scary but I mean they don't know what's coming right and that's like the effect of Kirby <laughs> I because I, I don't I was never aggressive and I know sometimes it probably came across that I was you know pretty direct and rude and like like a dictator as such but that's not how I am and that's not who I am and I and I played a lot of how I operate in life so if I want to put something on the table I will mm -hmm. and just see what comes of it and if people own it or if they don't or if they sort of backtrack and then I can get a feel of you know if they're emotional if they're paranoid if they you know like just adjusted or they were cool with it that's how I sort of started to read people yeah Kirby, you were powerful. You are a powerful, powerful survivor player. Were, did you like in the moment, right? And we know we had Alex kind of call you out for being a powerful dominant player in the game before he was eliminated. Did you feel like you had this target on your back at that time? Um, oh, probably not so much, no. Um, but it was weird because like you see Caroline wanting to work with Ferris, you see Mark wanting to work with Ferris, but neither of them wanted to work with me. Like, mm -hmm. but I was open to it. Whereas, mm -hmm. and I even said to Caroline, but she, yeah, I don't know what it was. I, and I used to say that Ferris could sell a car without an engine and people would think it's a Rolls Royce. Like it just, he was pretty good at it too. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't really know. That's so interesting to me because it, I mean, we kind of saw after Alex made that comment and then after Alex was eliminated, the story that was being told was, oh, uh, Kirby starting to get a little bit more paranoid about her game. So it, it, did your strategy have to change after that? No, I don't think, and I know it looked like I was really paranoid, but I, I wasn't too nervous because I kept saying to Ferris, if I go, you go. And if I go too soon, your game's done. Like, because Mark's not going to want you around. Like, mm. Caroline's not going to want you around. Mm -hmm. I was the shield and I felt like at that stage I knew that I hadn't been trying in the challenges. Like, there's no point in me doing endurance if I'm standing next to Ree. Ree's, I don't know where she goes, but that's a whole, she's a beast. Um, and then there's strength challenges. There's no point in me trying if Jaden's sitting there. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> But when I needed to um, and I was able to, I did. But 
that didn't mean that I was still paranoid. Like I still thought about the game and there's so many possibilities. And mm -hmm. it, it doesn't suit everyone's game. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny to me and I'm very curious as to how you feel considering your and Ferris's relationship throughout the game. How did you feel and did you expect for them to push you the way they have been pushing you on social media? I mean, every episode i'm i'm waiting i'm like oh it's gonna be this one it's gonna be this one and of course every episode is still amazing but i'm like survivor if it's not this one and it's now we know up until the final five you could have pushed it a little later because every episode i'm like what's gonna happen what's gonna happen yes. did you expect that or because i know when you're in the game you know we would talk at camp and be like that storyline isn't going to work. They're not going to use that and they can see it and then you're like holy crap if i had known you know yeah, yeah, yeah. No, see, no, I, my whole intention of going on the show is just to challenge myself and enjoy it. And I loved every single moment. So I wasn't worried about what could be in the edit. And when the edit came out the way that it has and the storyline was our on again, off again relationship. Um, and I seem like a brother, I do. And I, his wife is amazing and I love her. But sometimes I felt like it was this, yeah, Love Island relationship that you're speaking about, Maddie. <laughs> It's, it was bizarre, but it's, for me, as an Aboriginal woman in Australia, I feel so proud to have represented my people the way that I want to. We're, you know, we're something to celebrate and it's like, you know, we're fun and loving and our culture is one of the oldest living, is the oldest living culture in, in the world. So, yeah, for me to be on the game and to be, I guess, front and centre in a sense, I was not expecting it and even if I wasn't, you know, it wouldn't bother me, but the fact that it is, it yeah, I feel really proud. Mm -hmm. And you got to represent with your flag as well on your bathing suit. I mean, every photo, because I wasn't aware until I went to Australia to visit. I'm like, I know that flag. And so that was really nice to see you on the promotions with the flag and very bright, you know, it, it was really good to see. Yeah, I've worn these bathers forever and I'm so proud to be an Aboriginal person and so proud to be an Australian as well. So, and a female, like Ferris called it out, I, I'm all about boss women too. So, yeah, I've I've enjoyed this whole experience and for the edit to be the way that it is, like it's, yeah, it's so cool. And my family, have, as much as they're in mourning, they got around it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Ferris, you, please describe to me how it was possible for, for him to go from your biggest enemy on that island to one of your closest allies by the end of it. How did that happen? Yeah, well, we played, well, I certainly played in two worlds. So I was playing the game of Survivor, but I was also building these deep connections. And the thing with Ferris and I, our backgrounds, um, whether religion, culture or whatever that is, we have similar sort of experiences and approaches in our walks of life. So we have this deeper understanding of, of what that means to us and our people. So, yeah, it didn't matter whether we were going at each other. When there was no strat chat or no gameplay, you'd see us in the background would be arguing about something that he's done. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, when we – it was after the Garrick vote, he – came up to me at the Titans beach and was like, can you just take me to merge and let's work together? And that's when we started our sort of secret little us. Okay. I oh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Me too. And were you confident that Ferris wouldn't retaliate after you orchestrated Eileen's elimination? Yeah, because if you're tit for tat um, in a game like that, because it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily tit for tat. It was who's, who's in the way of what I need and mm -hmm. Garrick was in the way of what I need. Eileen was in the way of what I need. And he didn't know that that's what we need. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like for our relationship to blossom. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Eileen was smart enough to not, not second guess, but make him second guess what I was saying. Even though it might have worked for me and him, she, she knew how to, same with Raymond, like they mm -hmm. planted seeds and he'd then go, oh, yeah, okay, maybe not. Maybe I don't listen to Kirby. But once she was gone, it was so much easier. And Garrett was listening. Mm, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And when it comes to your relationship with Ferris, because it's at the forefront of the entire season, first, I respect the fact that you guys can separate the two because we've had experiences and we've seen it where people can blindside somebody and then they just don't talk to them. I mean, even in life. <laughs> 
So the fact that you guys can actually put that aside, I really admire that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm just curious. I know you were serious because they did present it like that in the edit. Um, but can you elaborate maybe a little bit more? Did it take a lot of convincing to convince Ferris to believe you that you wanted to take him to the end? Because he did, of course, in that little chat kind of seem like, really? Like, no way. Do you feel mm -hmm. like he actually believed you? Because at first my question was going to be, were you serious? But I really yeah. feel like you were. Yeah, no, no, I was, I was serious. I was, and maybe this is the, the athlete in me. So there's no point winning a premiership <laughs> if you can run straight over the team, like, I, I wanted to stand next to the best and if the best was Ferris and I won, then great. If he won, then he deserves the title of the sole survivor and, and in my eyes because obviously that's not the way that you play the game. But, yeah, I was dead set with that and I explained it to him. Like, there's no point me standing next to Caroline, Raymond and Mark because I don't know what they've done. I've sort of – we've battled at each other. So I told him over and over and over again that this is what – I want to do. Um, we didn't know what challenges were up next and he knew that I won the last two, um, which meant that there was a possibility that I could win the next one, which meant that he was he was good to go. So it was a safe spot. I was so eager to see a final tribal council with between you and Ferris. I was like, mm -hmm. that would have been nail biting. But I have a, you know, you, you did get eliminated in this latest episode. So I have to know, were you aware that the idol found by Raymond was actually Ferris's? Yeah, yeah. I was I was there when that, that happened because we watched Mark and Caroline obviously go and look for an idol and with either of them having it would make it harder for us. So if I'd won the necklace, that means Raymond or Raymond was probably up for grabs because Ferris has an idol, right? So mm -hmm. as long as they stopped looking, then we were okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the difference was that I didn't win the necklace because the other one should have went from the Titans. But yeah, I, I think he looked at the jury and he realized that maybe they were smiling more for me than they were for him. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, I'm very curious. Now, looking back, being that this was your elimination show um, or episode, excuse me, what was your favorite or what move made you most proud, whether it was a situation you just got out of or someone that you actually were a pivotal or the head honcho of getting them out? What was that for you? I think I think the Eileen move. Um because I was sort of sitting in the dark and I wasn't in a lot of conversations and I was okay with that because I was privy to a lot of the information. Had Val telling me things, had Ray telling me things, had Ferris telling me things. So I really didn't need to be involved. But the more that we were getting into the depth of the game with Eileen sitting around and Ferris has got uh, Alex, Eileen, Raymond and himself, there's four sitting out top, I wanted to make people feel like it was their move to get Eileen. So said to Val, what do you think of the Ferris Four? Like Eileen seems like she's maybe the brains. Come back to me and tell me a name. So the same thing to Caroline and Kitty. And they all came back and said, well, let's do Eileen. And I was like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and for me that was, I felt like that was strategic in the sense that I didn't have to do a lot. I just mm -hmm. needed to make them aware. And I just mm -hmm. sat around the fire. So I was in view of Ferris and he knew that I wasn't up to something, um, which absolutely blindsided him. So he had no idea. Mm. Really good. Kirby, I mean it when I say I enjoyed watching you play this season so much. It was incredible to watch. And I have to know if you get were given the option to continue your storyline, would you go back? Oh, 100%. I have so much to learn. Like I've never watched this game before and I, I played instinctively. I I love playing like in chaos. I love mm -hmm. the fact that any we vote somebody else out and that just changes the whole dynamics. I think it's exciting. So mm -hmm. I'll do that all again, but I'll do it all better. You're I'm a survivor so natural. <laughs> you made it look easy. You're going to go back and watch some of the original seasons? Yeah, I think I will. I think I need to understand what past plays people are talking about and what moves are made and that, that have been historic and, yeah, who's what. So <laughs> I think I need to pay respect to the game for what it, for what it once was because I feel like it's maybe different now. Yeah, Kirby. starting with, like, maybe a few OG US, 
Mm. And then right now, in my opinion, and quite a few I've heard, Australian Survivor is it. Because a lot of the American stuff has gotten a little bit too showy, like these advantages, people losing their votes. I mean, you can strategize all day, turn up to tribal council, don't have a vote. So that's something that not everybody loves. Um, it might give you some ideas, but definitely some of the older uh, American version uh, episodes. And yeah, the Australian version is absolutely killing it. I mean, I've seen polls where everybody's like, I want to watch the Australian version. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's exciting. I, I hated the beanbag challenge, but it was so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to chat with Nina and I. We so enjoyed doing this exit interview. Again, we'd love to see you play again. Thank you all so much for tuning in and joining us. Uh, as we talk to Kirby, make sure you subscribe so you can be notified about all of the other coverage that we're doing as this season of Titans vs. Rebels comes to an end. Kirby, thank you so much for joining again. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Have a good one, everyone.